All right, so we're going to finish up today talking about mole relationships. Yesterday we talked about mass to mole conversion. We did a bunch of examples. We did mole to mass conversions. We did atoms and molecules to moles. We did mass to moles to atoms to molecules. And then last but not least, we did atoms to molecules to moles to mass. A lot of this is just simple unit conversions. However, it requires a lot of practice to get used to it. So if you haven't finished that worksheet already, make sure that you do. And make sure your answers are coming out that match the key. I know a lot of people are just um, stuck with the calculator use. So make sure you're comfortable using your calculator before the next exam. Um, today's lecture is going to talk about stoichiometry. Stoichiometry is really just a fancy word that relates the amount of starting materials you have to the amounts of products you have in a reaction. So let's define it really quick. It's a quantitative relationship between starting materials and products in a chemical reaction. So I pulled this from the textbook and it shows an example of this where you can take one carbon atom plus a molecule of oxygen which is O2 and you can make carbon dioxide, right? So if we look at this ratio, for every one atom of carbon, you need one molecule of ox oxygen to produce one molecule of carbon dioxide, right? Makes pretty reasonable sense. Another way of thinking about this is for every one mole of carbon dioxide, you need one mole of oxygen molecules and that will give you one mole of CO2 molecules. So that makes sense too. Another way of thinking about this relationship is for every 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd carbon atoms, you'll need 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd oxygen molecules, which are O2, and that will give you 6.02 times 10 to the third CO2 molecules. Another quantitative relationship would be to look at the molar mass, right? So down here it says, okay, for 12 grams of carbon, you'll need 32 grams of oxygen, that's the molecular weight of O2, and that will give you 44 grams of carbon dioxide, which is the molecular weight of CO2. There's a lot going on in these problems and a lot of different questions that can be asked, but really it's just a quantitative relationship looking at the ratio of things. So let's do a few practice problems. Oh, come on, here we go. And first one I'll give you is silicon dioxide plus HF makes silicon tetrafluoride plus H2O. Just because I like side stories, has anybody seen Breaking Bad, the series? So the first season, he dissolves a guy's body in HF and it eats through the bathtub and collapses through the floor. HF doesn't really do that, but HF will react with the calcium in your bones, and it would have reacted with his bathtub, and it will react with silicon. It's a really nasty reagent to work with. Does anybody know what silicon dioxide is in the natural world? Sand. So really, hydrofluoric acid will eat away glass and sand. It's a really weird reagent that way. But the first thing we do before we do any stoichiometry is we have to balance everything. So I'll give you guys a minute to try to balance this equation, but make sure that you've got the correct number of atoms on both the starting material side and the product side and use the right coefficients.
And then give me a thumbs up if you think you got it balanced already. A couple thumbs. All right, so let's take a look at it really quick. I always start with the heaviest atom, which in this case, silicon's the heaviest. We've got one silicon on the left, one silicon on the right, so that's balanced. If we look at oxygen, we've got two oxygens on the left, we only have one on the right. So I'll go ahead and plug in a two over here. So now we've got two on the left, two on the right, that looks good. All right, now we'll jump over to hydrofluoric acid, HF. We've got one hydrogen on the left, but we've got four on the right. So I'm gonna plug in a four over here. That gives us four hydrogens on the left, four hydrogens on the right, so we've bounced our hydrogens. All right, we've got four fluorines on the left, and we've got four fluorines on the right, so are we completely bounced? Yes. Yeah, I would say so. It's really important that you guys bounce this simply because your coefficients in a bounce equation are the ratio of moles. Sorry, relate to the mole ratio. So I'll say starting materials and or products. So for example, if I have one mole of silicon dioxide, that SiO2, that means I need four moles of HF for the reaction to proceed. If I have two moles of HF, how many moles of silicon dioxide would I need? Half. So it's really just a ratio of all the components on the starting material side to your product side. Um, it doesn't have to necessarily be a whole number, but it is a ratio that you have to keep track of. Yep. What does SM mean? SM is starting material. Sorry, I'm, I like to shorthand things. That's a good question. <laughs> all right, so now let's take a look at some questions involving this. All right, so problem number one. How many moles of HF do you need to make 3.66 moles of H2O? And you will have to refer to that equation. So just like with any unit conversion problem, we always start out with what we know. We know we've got 3.66 moles of H2O that we're trying to make. We need to cancel out the moles, sorry. And we're trying to figure out how many moles of HF we need. So that moles of HF should go on top because that's the unit we're trying to solve for. And this should give us our correct answer, right? So we're canceling out moles of H2O, moles of H2O, and we're gonna end up with units in moles of HF. Okay, so just like I said before, we need to know the ratio of our reagents or our products, right? So if we go back up, we need to determine the ratio of HF to H2O. If we go back up and we look, there are four equivalents of HF for two moles of H2O. Do you guys see that? So I'll go down here and I'll plug this in and I'll say four moles of HF for every two moles of H2O for this particular reaction. So if we go ahead and we plug this in, we should get an answer that is 7.32 moles of HF. If you've got a calculator, let me know if I'm on base. All right, that's good. 
All right, so these are pretty simple. It's important to remember that these ratios are dependent on you bouncing your equation correctly. So if you don't bounce your equation correctly, you can't really do these stoichiometry problems very well. Let's do another problem. So problem number two is how many moles of silicon tetrafluoride, so SiF4, are made when 7.89 moles of H2O are made. So I'll give you guys a minute to work on this, but check with your neighbor and see if you're getting the correct answer as your neighbor. All right, I'm seeing a lot of thumbs. So again, we start with what we know. We've got 7.89 moles of H2O. That's the thing we know. We need to cancel out moles of H2O, so I'm gonna immediately put that on the bottom. We're trying to figure out how many moles of silicon tetrafluoride are made. Okay, and then what's the ratio going to be? One to two. One to two? Yeah, so if we go back and look at our bounce reaction, silicon tetrafluoride had no number in front of it, so that's an implied one. So there's one mole of silicon tetrafluoride made for every two moles of water made. So it's a one to two ratio. So let's go back and plug that in. So how many moles should we get? Yeah, 3.95 moles of silicon tetrafluoride are made. And it's important too for all of these stoichiometry problems to be very careful writing out your units. If you don't write out your units, it's very easy to get lost with where you're at. So try to be as specific as possible with your units. And then always box your answer. That way I kind of know what stopping point you're at and that you're not just stopping midway through your conversion. Do these make sense? Yeah, these are pretty easy. Let's do some harder ones. I know you guys like the harder ones. So problem three is going to be using the same equation. All right, so how many... Moles of H2O are made when 2.44 grams of SiO2 react. Now we've got a little bit more going on, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to rewrite our equation so I don't have to constantly scroll up. We said one mole of SiO2 plus four moles of HF go to one mole of silicon tetrafluoride plus two moles of water. So this is our bounce chemical equation that we need. Just like before, we want to start with what we know. So we're going 2.44 grams of SiO2. We want to cancel out SiO2 and the units were grams. And I always tell people that the best trick with stoichiometry is when you're stuck and you don't quite know where to go, always go to moles. So trick, always convert to moles. when stuck. It's a really good way of getting out of problems. All right, so in this case, we're gonna put moles on top. Okay, now we're kinda in another problem. We've gotta determine this ratio of grams to moles for SiO2, how do we do that? 
yeah, we have to figure out the mass of SiO2, the molecular mass. So let's do that really quick. So the molecular weight of SiO2 is equal to one silicon. And silicon, if we look at the periodic table, is 28.09. plus two oxygens, and oxygens are 16.00, which gives us a molecular weight of 66.09 grams per mole for that silicon dioxide. Okay, so does that 66.9 go on the top or the bottom for our conversion? You go on the bottom, right? So if you see down here, the 66.9 was with the gram unit. Oh, 60. Oh, my goodness. Thank you. 60.09. That's why I keep you guys around. You keep me honest. All right. So this should go with the grams unit. So 60.09 grams for every one mole. Okay. So now we've done our trick of converting to moles first. Okay. We're almost there. The question isn't how many moles of silicon dioxide we have, it's how many moles of water are made. So we want to cancel out our moles of SiO2. We want to be left with moles of water. What's the ratio here? One, two. Yeah, so there's two moles of water we saw that up here, so we're going to put two moles here. And then over at SiO2, there's no number, so that's implied 1. So it's a 2 to 1 ratio. So now we've canceled out moles of silicon dioxide, and we're left with moles of water. Okay, does anybody want to help me with the calculator? It was what? Is that what other people are getting? 0.83. Is it 0.83 or 0 0.08? Okay, so I'm getting the same. I'm getting 0 0.0812 moles of water. And again, I'm going to box this just to keep track of my correct answer. So these do sometimes require more than one conversion, but like I said, try to convert to moles and then back out to whatever unit you want to get in the end. You guys want to try another one? Yes. We'll do another one as a practice problem. And then I'll give you a, a few cool ones. Okay, so how many moles? Whoop, of silicon tetrafluoride are made? when 12.3 grams of H2O are formed. So I'll give you guys a minute to work on this, but check with your neighbor and try to use the same strategy that we used for problem three. All right, so let's try this as a class. Again, we're going to start with what we know. We've got 12.3 grams of H2O. That's the units we're given. We need to cancel out grams of H2O. When, what unit should go on the top here? Moles of H2O. Did anybody determine the molecular weight for H2O? 18.016, okay. Does that go on the top or the bottom, that 18.016? On the bottom, right? That's grams per mole, so 18.016, and that's per mole. Okay, so now we've canceled out grams of H2O. We've got moles of H2O. We don't want moles of H2O, so we need to cancel that out. And we need to get moles of silicon tetrafluoride, so I'll put that on top. 
That allows us to cancel these out and get our correct unit. All right, what's the ratio of silicon tetrafluoride to water? One to two. Okay, so if we go ahead and we plug this in, what are the values that you guys are getting? 0 0.3, 4, 1. Yep, it should have three sig figs, so be careful with your sig figs. And that would be moles of silicon tetrafluoride. Does that make sense? All right, let's take it one step further. You guys are going to be sick of silicon tetrafluoride after this. <laughs> All right. Problem number five. I'll scroll up or pull that up later. What mass of H2O is made when 2.33 grams of SiO2 reacts? And I'm going to pull this up. This is a pretty nice diagram of the unit conversions that we needed to accomplish. And then I'll give you guys a minute to work on this. So we need to start out with the grams that we have, which is 2.33. We need to figure out how many moles of that reagent we have. And then convert that to the moles of the other reagent or product. And then use molecular weight to determine grams of that. So it's in one more step. So I'll give you guys a minute to work on this. And then I'll rewrite the net balance equation over here so we don't have to constantly go back and forth. All right, let's take a look at this as a class. So first thing we need to do is start out with what we know, which is 2.33 grams of SiO2. We need to go from grams to moles. So I'm gonna put grams of SiO2 on the bottom, and I'm gonna put moles of SiO2 on the top. Okay. But did anybody figure out the molecular weight of silicon dioxide? 60.09, that was the one we did before. And that should go on the bottom, right? So make sure you've got it on the right side. Okay, so now we've got moles of silicon dioxide. We're not interested in silicon dioxide for our final answer though, we're interested in water. So I'm gonna cancel out moles of SiO2. So I'll put that on the bottom and convert that to moles of water. All right, what's the ratio again? Two. Two to one. All right, and then we'll cancel out moles of water, so I'll put that on the bottom. And we wanna figure out how many grams, because we want the mass of H2O. And what was the molecular weight again for water? 18.016, was that right? For every one mole. Double check that all our units cancel up. So we'll do grams of SiO2 cancel top and bottom here. Moles of SiO2 cancel here and here. Moles of H2O cancel here and here. And we're left with our mass unit that we want. What was the mass? Anybody get it? 1.40. We should have three sig figs. Grams of H2O. Does that make sense? These do get a little bit steppy after a while. Let's do a more interesting challenge problem that doesn't involve silicon. I'm getting kind of tired of it. Has anybody taken bio classes here? Okay, this is a kind of biology related one. So there's this mouse. This is called a kangaroo mouse. Has anybody seen one of these before? Not here, yeah, they don't live in this state.
The kangaroo mouse is really fascinating. It lives in uh, desert ecosystems, and it actually can survive without drinking water, which is weird to think about, right? And so if you think about it, it's a really advanced animal for surviving in uh, desert ecosystems because it can radiate its heat really well and it doesn't evaporate off very much water, if any at all. So let's talk about why that can happen. What do you guys think? Does anybody have an idea of how it can survive without water? Because there's some sort of chemical reaction that's going on inside and it creates water. Yeah, exactly. There's a chemical reaction going on inside of the mouse that's producing water. So this mouse doesn't need to go out and find a pond to drink out of or anything. It just needs to eat food. And then from that process, it will produce water from metabolizing food. So let's take a look at that process. There's C6H12O6. This is glu glucose that's found in carbohydrates, right? It can take this plus O2, and it can convert this to CO2, that stuff we exhale, plus water. So the byproduct of metabolism is water. So if it eats enough carbohydrates, it can produce enough water to survive off of. What's the first thing we need to do? Balance the equation, okay? So I'll give you guys a minute to balance this, and then I'll give you guys a question to answer too. How much water is produced when 25.05 grams of glucose is metabolized? Yeah, let's do mass here. I'll cheat. So how much water in grams is produced when 25.05 grams of glucose is metabolized? So let's try this as a class. First thing we'll do is balance the equation. Does anybody want to help me out? For glucose, the C6H12O6, what coefficient should go in front of it? A 1. So we'll just leave that blank. How about O2? 6. We need 6 O2. Okay. And then for CO2, how many do we need? 6. And then for water, how many do we need? 6. All right, so we've got a balanced equation now. Now we're good to go. All right, we start out with what we know. We know we've got 25.05 grams of C6H12O6. We need to cancel it out, so I'm going to put that on the bottom. And we need to convert to moles first, right? I'm going to scoot this over. All right, what's the molecular weight for glucose? I think we figured that out. Yeah, it was last term. It was 180 point what? Yeah, we'll just do 1.6, I guess. Keep it simple. Okay, so now we've canceled out grams of glucose. We've got moles of glucose. But we're interested in water, so we need to convert moles of glucose. into moles of water. And if we look up here, we've got six moles of water for every one mole of glucose. So I'll plug in a six on the top. That makes sense? All right, what's the next thing? Then we need to convert from moles of water to grams of water, right? So I'll put moles of water on the bottom. And I'll put grams of water on the top. 
And this looks like molecular weight, right? So what's the molecular weight for water? 18.02 approximately for every one mole. We double check that our units cancel. Cancel these, we'll cancel the moles, cancel out the moles of water, and we're left with grams of H2O. That looks good. What are you guys getting for the answer here? 15.03, we need four sig figs. And this would be how much water would be produced if this little mouse were to eat 25 grams of glucose. Interestingly, this is true for humans. Does anybody know about how much water humans would need in a typical day? Give or take? Like, assume Northwest. About two liters. Does anybody know how much sugar we'd have to eat to get two liters of water out for metabolism? I won't force you guys to do this calculation, but it's over seven grams of sugar, or sorry, seven pounds of sugar that you'd have to eat. So you know the like five pound bags you'd see in a store? You'd have to eat one and a half of those to get as much sugar as you need. I wouldn't recommend that simply because you will get diabetes and probably die. So don't do that. But these little mice are really good. They've evolved to adapt to the extreme conditions in the desert. All right, what we're gonna do with the rest of our time, I know we don't have a lot of time, but I've got another practice worksheet. A lot of people said they just wanted more and more practice. So I've got worksheets up front for all three days. This stoichiometry practice worksheet, again, I would recommend working through it um, without looking at the key. And then the key is posted online if you'd like to check it later. Tomorrow, we're going to just do the carbonates lab. So come ready to go and try to be prepared for more stoichiometry.